21 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It's December 9th, 2014. How did that happen already, Robin? I think it was just January 1st, 2014, wasn't it? Just, yeah. It was like a day ago. Or so. Here it's gone by. So ah, it goes so fast. The temperature right now, 47 degrees. I don't know if you've been outside yet, but it's chilly. It's pretty. I didn't need. I didn't feel like I needed to wear a coat, but it's chilly. Uh-huh. Sorry, Forty-seven yeah. degrees. Good morning, Robin. How you doing? Good, good, good. How are you doing, Larry? Good morning. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, looks festive in here. Got a, a Christmas yeah. tree up now, and some of the decorations that we've uh, pulled out of storage. It's the American tradition. You put put decorations up, you put them away, and a year yep. later you bring them back out. And exactly. <laughs> nice change, you know, from the regular uh, stuff that goes on the other. 10 months it is it is and you know you always hear people say why don't we keep this stuff up all year long well that would make it not so special right yeah exactly that would be boring it's up long enough as it is yeah. <laughs> it's long enough as it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got a pretty good show this morning. Uh, 10, uh, 7.35. Hmm. Let's just look at this uh, this report as uh, some... Let me just read the headline. U.S. braces for possible attacks on Americans ahead of torture report release. Mm-hmm. So uh, those who are smarter than us, Robin, have decided to release a report mm-hmm. that might trigger tortures... I mean, uh, tax on Americans. I think everybody was talking about that. All the citizens were saying, yeah, it looks like it's going to happen here because we haven't been able to, you know, get rid of the problem over there. So I I just think they just want to make themselves look good. Well, this goes back to the 2001 attacks. Uh Uh-huh. You know that, right? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, no. I thought it was current. No. Oh. This is a a, a secret, uh, I think it's a 500-page summary of a 3,000-page report or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about it when we uh, get to 735. Uh, so there you go. Wow. Uh, 820 this morning. We have a guest at 820. That means our ga- visit with Galen will be uh, shortened a little bit. Yep. Gene Petricello is coming on. He is the communications manager at Six Flags Over Georgia. Mm-hmm. We love our theme parks, some of us. Yeah. And I think they're wonderful. Most of us. And yet, have you ever gone north, young man? (laughs) Have you ever gone north? Uh, They have something called Holiday in the Park. Uh, It is a Christmas-themed event at Six Flags over Georgia. What what city is Six Flags in, do you know? Atlanta. It's in Atlanta, okay. Yeah, I believe so. So they have have a a special going on up there, and Gene Petricello wants to tell us about that special, Mm -hmm. so looking forward to hearing about it. I've never been to Six Flags, have you? Yes, yes, I have. It's wonderful. I I was back in 19... Oh, gosh, 75 or 76, way back when. And do you know what the six flags means? What is it? Does it represent six states or six? I don't know, because they also have a six flags over Texas. So I Hmm. I have no clue what the six flags mean. I I just went to have fun. I will ask Gene, (laughs) what are the six flags mean? That's right. That's right. You would think I would know this, but I don't know much. I don't really know much. (laughs) I'd rather just go and have fun. (laughs) 8.35 this morning, we'll uh, read the news in, in brief. So if you've never heard that portion of the morning and you like to catch up on the news without being a news junkie in the real sense Uh you got a little half hour you catch up on almost every story you're ever going to hear from anybody talking about at the office and work or in school wherever you go exactly caroline baldwin will be here today she's our master gardener she's not really ours but she comes Mm -hmm. in here and uh her show is called in the garden with caroline yeah we have special prizes for that show too too. she gave us some special prizes oh that's right oh yes and what are the prizes do you remember uh let's see we have a 20 dollars gift certificate to bob wines and then we have a two gallon size plant valued at 39.95 wow gonna have fun on caroline's show yeah really nice all right, at 10.05, Cole James is coming in. He's the co-creator of the Grief Recovery Method. He's written a book called The Grief Recovery Handbook for Pet Loss. Uh-huh. And I'll be speaking to him at 10.05. Damage Control, Joe Reichel, will be here at uh, 10.35. He's going to tell you what you can do to fix that thing and what tool you might need to fix that countertop yep. or that toilet or whatever's yep. gone wrong in your house. However... If it's a little bit beyond your expertise, you might want to ask Joe to recommend somebody for you. That's right. He knows. Uh, at 11.05, I have the phone scams of 2014. Yesterday, oh. I was listening to Clark Howard, and a lady called him up and said she had a call from the IRS. Uh-huh. And they said this is the final call. Uh, and she didn't remember getting any other calls, so she was a little bit worried. And they were threatening 
to file a federal lawsuit against her. Oh my gosh! If she didn't respond, and uh, Clark How- Clark Howard, am I saying his name right? Yes, Clark, Clark, Clark Howard? Howard. For some reason, am I saying his Clark name Howard. right? Yeah. God, for some reason, Isn't it didn't he sound the right. Guy? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, so Clark Howard was saying that. Um, gosh, for some reason, his name didn't sound right to me. <laughs> that uh, that's a scam. Uh-huh. Uh, so if you get that call yourself, know that Clark Howard said it's a scam. The, the IRS will not call you like that. You'll probably get something in the mail. Yeah, they'll give you a letter and then they'll send their agents and put you in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> One letter. But anyway, no. So I have, the, I have the top scams, and they're all phone scams, of 2014. The top wow. phone scams of 2014, and one of them Gosh. is IRS-related, so... Wow, that is scary. Uh, that's at 11.05. 11.20, Neva Chakran is coming on. Neva is a nutrition communications consultant for USA Today, for uh, Women's World, and some other magazines, plus CNN and Fox News, coming on to speak about eating the holiday foods you love to get to the new year without adding extra pounds. <laughs> No, one month from today, it'll be nine days into the new year. Just, no, just, isn't that just something? pointing that out. Wow. Fun with Joe. I have some Christmas movie titles uh-huh. that you'll have to guess. I'll tell you the year and the star, and you tell me who, uh, what the name of the movie was. Oh, okay. That'll be fun. The year it came out and the star of the movie, or one of the stars anyway, and then you tell me what the name of the movie was. Excellent. And then when uh, Galen is on, I have, uh, we might not have a time for all of these, but I have some real stories behind famous food mascots. Oh. The real story is behind some of them. And one of them, I'll tell you a little sneak peek if you don't mind. Okay. We had Wally Amos on, the guy who started Famous Amos Cookies. Yeah, we did a couple of times. And for some reason, I was thinking he was, even when he ha- even when he was on the show with us, I got the feeling he was kind of these, one of these guys that just had ra- a rags to riches story. He wasn't quite in rags. He was, oh. um, now maybe before he was a talent agent for the William Morris Agency. <laughs> Oh, never knew that. But he was a talent agent for the William Morris Agency. And um, in fact, one of the groups he represented was Simon and Garfunkel. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. Isn't that amazing? And, and he did tell us that he got his first upfront money from Marvin Gaye. So, mm-hmm. But we never really understood why how that happened. I just thought yeah, Marvin Gaye right. saw him on the street singing or something. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and gave him the money. Hey, start a cookie company. <laughs> it's not the way it worked out. But anyway, some, some of the stories are oh, pretty wow. cool. Oh, wow. Uh, and so there we go. And some of the other things Gosh. in the news. Let's see what I want to make sure I mention here. Um, mm-hmm. This is interesting stuff. Uh, so uh, the, the, let's see. Yeah, we're bracing for ranking. Thousands of Marines. This is what we're going to talk about at 735. Okay. Thousands of Marines have been put on a higher state of alert ahead of the anticipated release of a potentially explosive Senate report on coercive interrogation techniques used by the United States in the aftermath of 9-11. The alert status means units are ready to deploy at a moment's notice should a U.S. embassy or base come under threat. The yeah. long-delayed report details the use of torture under the White House of President Bush, George W. Bush, that would be, outgoing Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Dianne Feinstein, a California Democrat, has been pushing for the report's release. Obviously, she's trying to throw mud at the former president. All right, we'll take a little break. That's my opinion right there. Yes. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio, I'm Steve Rappaport. The secrets of CIA interrogations will be exposed this morning. U.S. military bases, embassies, and consulates are on heightened alert ahead of the Senate Intelligence Committee's release of a report critical of CIA tactics like waterboarding and sleep deprivation. Critics on Capitol Hill and in the intelligence community argue releasing details of enhanced interrogation since banned by the administration will serve only as propaganda for terrorist groups. Fox Radio's Jared Halpern, federal investigator. Investigators recovering the black boxes from a small plane that crashed into a Maryland home yesterday. Six people were killed. Our mission is to find out not only what happened, but why it happened, because we want to make sure that something like this never happens again. Robert Sumwalt with the NTSB. A nasty mix of wet and white in store for the Northeast today. Some areas could see more than a foot of snow. Fox News. We report. You decide. Fox News Early Prime, breaking down business news and its impact on your bottom line. Your world with Neil Cavuto. 
That's how I do business. That's why I am business. Bold positions and fresh opinions on the topics America is buzzing about. The five. How do you think this will set in with the American people? This will be the pulse of the nation. Washington insight and political know-how from the best in the Beltway. Special report with Brett Bay. The epicenter of the political world is here. The number one place for fair and balanced coverage. Fox News Channel. What's wrong with working hard to make our lives and our kids' lives better? Nothing. At Fox Business, we don't have a problem with success. We have a very big problem with those who get in the way of it. We don't come out of the box bashing those who make money. Just the politicians stealing it and the bureaucracies wasting it. We're not just sitting behind a desk. We're out in the field, on the floor, with the folks. Because when a story moves forward, so do we. Fox Business, the power to prosper. Check your local listings. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Do things you used to love once a week, like game night with friends. Familiar activities will activate the pleasure centers in your brain. Here's a bad habit that can cut your chances of advancement right in half. Gossiping. Only go shopping in high heels. That uses up enough brain power that you're less likely to give in to impulse purchases that's way out of your price range. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSales.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements, from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Tuesday morning. Any fun things we can uh, mention before we get to the serious stuff? we got a parade to talk about this uh, this Saturday. Yep. There's the Ocala Christmas Parade. I guess you know that already. Yep, we have Temperatures that. are expected to be cool, which is cool in the other sense of the word. I, I, love, uh, I love Ocala's Christmas Parade. I love the fact that it's at night. Um, so that's right, and there's a there's a penguin event at the Bellevue Public Library this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, the perfectly preposterous penguins annual event program will be there. You'll be able to learn all about the coolest birds on earth while enjoying games, crafts, treats, and surprises. There you go. Just, at the Bellevue Library, just one is good. I do want to do the whole yeah. list, but, but yeah, just you know, a little fun thing before we get to the serious thing. All right, okay. let's let's talk about this and. Uh, 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 we'll probably express opinion throughout this uh, piece here, and it's from the American Free Press is where I'm reading this from. Mm -hmm. American embassies were on heightened alert today. 
or are on heightened alert, I should say, amid fears of a backlash to a long-delayed U.S. Senate report into the CIA's brutal interrogation of al-Qaeda suspects after the 2001 attacks. White House officials confirmed yesterday that they expect the report to be published, even though U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry warned late last week about the impact it could have around the world. Mm -hmm. Can we just go back? Can we comment on, on the word cruel? Yes. A brutal, rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, at that time, weren't we trying to get information from these guys? Sure. I mean, they killed uh, thousands of people. I anyway, mean, back to the story. For Pete's uh, sakes, John Kerry. No, you're, you're picking on the wrong person. Oh. He warned late last week about the impact. He said. Oh, okay. I thought he used the word brutal. I... No, the, oh. the American Free Press used the word brutal. Oh, okay. The CIA is brutal. Interrogation of Al Qaeda suspects. That's yeah. what the, oh, that's okay. what the American Free Press wrote. No, I got it. White House officials confirmed that they expect the report to be published, even though State Secretary, uh, U.S. Secretary of State, rather John Kerry, warned late last week that the impact could have what what the uh, impact could be around the world. While heavily redacted, the report is expected to be a damning a damning indictment of a secret program under the administration of former President George W. Bush to question dozens of terror detainees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember, the president was is in charge of the military, and the military was in charge of trying to figure out who destroyed our buildings and what we can do to stop them and get them for for their crimes. This, those were my words. Uh, going back to the story from the American Free Press. Since coming to office in 2009, President Barack Obama has sought to distance the United States from the past deeds and outlawed harsh interrogation techniques, which he denounced as torture. Okay. So we don't torture people. We just kill them, though. Yeah. I guess that's preferable. We we have heard from the committee that they do intend to release the report tomorrow, which is today. That according to House White House spokesman John Ernest. And then it says prudent steps, those are their words, of course, had been taken to boost security at US facilities and diplomatic missions abroad in case the report triggers a wave of fury. So in other words, we're attacked. Now, we don't know what this report says yet. And yes. when we do, then I guess we can comment on that. But right now, this is what we know. We know that we were attacked in 2001. We know that we were horribly attacked in 2001. We, we know that it was very, very horrible, right? Yes. We know that we wanted to make sure this didn't happen again. We didn't want any more buildings crashed into. We didn't want the bad guys to win. That's our mission. Our mission is to protect ourselves and our children in our country, mm-hmm. right? And so we get the, the, the friends of the bad guys, and we capture them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't kill them, we capture them. And then we decide we want to get information from them. But guess what? They're not going to tell you anything. So what do we do? We have techniques. It's been used since the beginning of warfare. It's a warfare technique. Yes. It's a better option than killing them, isn't it? Sure it is. But now we just kill them. <laughs> and and so and so we have some people who were interrogated their word is torture. Their word is brutal. Mm-hmm. And you get the information so that we can prevent this from ever happening again. And now you know, everybody seems to know that whatever the details are of those interrogations, those details that might appear brutal, mm-hmm. keep in mind, though, they weren't killed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, which is more brutal? So we know this. We know that releasing that information is going to cause problems. But we're going to do it anyway. And the whole point, what do you think it is? Is there a political motive here? I think so. Is there a political motive to make President George W. Bush somehow look bad? And all the Republicans. I mean, is that that really what's happening here? Good question. I'm asking, and and maybe even implying, but Mm -hmm. I'm only asking. Uh, The report is understood to cover the treatment of around 100 terror suspects rounded up by U.S. operatives between 2001 and 2009 after the September 11, 2001 attacks 
by Al Qaeda, which destroyed the World Trade Center in New York and damaged the Pentagon. The suspects were subjected to waterboarding, stress positions, and other harsh methods in a series of interrogations either at CIA run secret prisons or the Guantanamo Bay U.S. military base in Cuba. U.S. media said the report is also expected to reveal that the CIA misled the White House about the details and success of the program. So I guess if it looks bad on anybody, it looks bad on the CIA. Yeah. Obama said in August, we tortured some folks. That's a quote. He knew some. He had the information about what's in the report that you're going to learn about today. The CIA's defenders insist the methods saved American lives by helping to uncover al-Qaeda's network, while critics say they ran contrary to U.S. values and hardened anti-American attitudes. Oh, gee. Well, I'm one of the defenders of it, by the Me way. If, you, if you're going to be one of the two camps, that's the camp I'm in. Yeah. The 6,200-page report has been prepared by the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. Its chairwoman, Senator Dianne Feinstein... Feinstein. Mm -hmm. I never know how to say it. Mm -mm. Sparred for months with the administration over proposed redactions. In April, the Senate committee voted overwhelmingly to release a reportedly severely critical 500-page executive summary and 20 conclusions of the secret document. You'll find out what they are later today. Gosh. Uh, but first, lawmakers had to negotiate with the White House on the redactions, something Feinstein, who called the report's findings shocking, pledged to do. The undertaking caused deep friction between the intelligence community, community and the lawmakers and Senate staffers. So, Gosh. I suppose we'll have different news tomorrow to report, but right now that's what's happening today. Let's. There's more to this, but let's take some phone calls. And if you want to call the number is 622-9622. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, thanks, Larry and Robin. It's uh, Mark. And for the listeners, I'm a former uh, embassy guard. I yeah. the U.S. Embassy Central and South America. And what, uh, just starting from the most expedient aspect of your story real quickly, Larry, is the Marines uh, have uh, formed, they did not have it when I was in, but they were forming a group called Fast Companies. And Fast Companies are pre-staged all around the world uh, so they can respond quickly. Uh, Fast is a fleet anti-terrorism security team. It's an acronym which abbreviates that. And that's, uh, Fast Company uh, was put on alert even, uh, actually, uh, they're even involved with Benghazi, but they couldn't get there quick enough for the, for the, uh, for the distance they had to travel. Um, so in any case, they're, they're a contemporary thing. I just would share, you know, from a veteran standpoint, that, um, you know, when the world's largest superpower and people that won World War II are forced to torture people in a, uh, a third world country, it doesn't look good. And there's a question that many Americans are not convinced that uh, Iraq had anything to do with 9-11. So, and also I would just share from a combat perspective, the people that traditionally get captured on the battlefield are your slowest people. So in an, in an, from an American perspective, if you get captured, do you know how long the intelligence that you may have, Larry, if you're a pilot? Uh, for flying and, and bombing targets is good for if you get captured as a pilot, not a grunt like I was. Do, uh, you know? No, I have no idea, Mark. Just, just go ahead. Well, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but all I'm saying is the. Uh, how would I know that? Our, pardon? How would I know how long my information would be good for? How would I know that information? Well, because it, we can turn around, and I'm not. I'm just throwing this out as a hypothetical, not specifically yourself, Larry. But uh, what I'm saying is that most intelligence, whether you're an American or you're somebody in another country that we're, we think we should be fighting, most intelligence is only good for a very short period of time. American targets and even our radio communications are only set up for short, uh, short periods of time and they automatically renew themselves. Our codes uh, and our intelligence is only good for a day or two. If you capture somebody on the battlefield, in a combat situation on the ground, and you grab somebody that was just shooting at you, and you drag them around the corner, and you start interrogating them, and you say, where are the rest of your friends? Uh, that's one type of torture. But once you're, you capture, like, whole units or, or hard, you know, a whole bunch of uh, people that are in civilian clothes or shooting at you, and you just start pounding on them in prison, that's a whole different... So real. can, I, can I ask you uh, an opinion? Can I ask you your opinion? Do you sure. think that President Bush, being the, the guy we would point to since he was in charge, did the wrong thing? 
Well, I can't say that he did because it, just listening to your last uh, uh, rereading of, of what, what the report is, th- this is uh, stuff that was kept from him. So, in other words, and then, and then there becomes a question, was it kept from him intentionally? With all, I would just also answer that question, Larry, uh, to throw or throw in more, more into the mix. Is President, uh, Vice President Cheney uh, was the vice president in, in all of American history that spent the most time running back and forth. Okay, the all right. So, so, but here's, but here's my thinking, Mark. Okay. My thinking is that if somebody did the wrong thing, whether it's the president or the CIA, then what would have been the right thing? Would the right thing have been to just kill them on the field instead of capturing them and asking them some questions? Or would the right thing have been just to say, oh, go ahead, guys, just run away. Or just capture them and put them in a prison and get no information at all. Which, is, which of those choices, which of those choices is preferable? Well, you're, you're asking a, mo- a moral question. Uh, to me, that's how I would mentally frame, frame it. And, and actually, interrogation uh, is a violation of... The- you don't, in other words, you don't, if an American gets captured, I would answer it this way, Larry. Americans did get captured on the battlefield in Iraq. We don't hear much about that. And so turnaround is fair play. So this is why after World War II, we came to an agreement called the Geneva Conventions. I'm not, a, I'm not such a bleeding heart, but we have to strive for the law uh, in, in civility and on the battlefield because what goes around comes around. Now, I'm a pretty tough customer when it comes to reality on the streets. I, I, my compassion would only go so far. My point as a veteran is uh, the only intelligence you're going to gather from hurting somebody is real immediate stuff. It's only good for the next, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. I doubt that you're going to find that from some grunt on the, uh, that was an opposition grunt. All right, so you, in other words, we, in other words the that captured anything, people... That had anything to do with 9-11. And I, and in other words, the captured people... Take a breath. In other words, the captured people, the captured people were, were just like pawns in, in, in a game, mm-hmm. is what you're saying. You're saying that they really had no information that was going to be of importance anyway. We, you might right, as well honey, just throw it away. You know, it's like, it's like, it, it's like going to war in Vietnam and, and you capture an NVA and you expect them to know what Ho Chi Minh's next battle move were, were going to be. And you, you wouldn't know. Just like I wouldn't know what General Westmoreland was going to tell me in Vietnam, even though I was too young for that. So my point is intelligence is, is a, is a game. Is it kept saying? And also, Iraq didn't have anything to do with 9/11. Those were the Saudis. Most of those people on 9/11 were either, you know, 16 or 17, and were from Saudi Arabia, and a handful from Yemen, which is the next nearest country. Wasn't it? Wasn't Al Qaeda? So, wasn't Al Qaeda our enemy, Iraq. though? Wasn't Al Qaeda our enemy, or isn't it? Still is. Well, uh, Al Qaeda. Al- and aren't these guys from Al Qaeda? National group. Al Qaeda, Larry, is a is a. Trend. All right, so so I, Mark, just if I can ask you to come to a conclusion, are you happy that they're releasing this report, or do you think it's a dumb move? I think that torture is a dumb move, and and, uh, and so you don't answer, answer the question. The, the question is, I'm asking about the report that's being released today. Dumb move or smart move? Well, it's it's gonna it's gonna make uh, it's gonna make uh, Republicans to think that uh, uh, that. The people that voted for George Bush are going to make them feel dumb because torture is not very Christian. How's that for an answer? Okay, that's, that's your not opinion. Very Christian-like. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. No, that's what Christians. That's what the Pope would tell me. I'm a Catholic. The Pope would say torture is wrong. Torture is that's wrong, religion. but but if you have but if you have people living right now, and you can't even tell me who would have been killed if we didn't get that information. You can't tell what me that. Information? Did you get, Larry? Who knows? We're going to find out today. No, you won't. No, we won't. All right. All right. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate the call, as always. I really do appreciate the call. I just, Mm -hmm. I was trying to get to a point. All right. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. You're on the air. Come on. Turn down your radio, because I can't, I I don't want to handle that echo thing. Just talk. Go ahead. Oh, Larry? Yeah. This is Norm. Hey, Norm. Can you give me three minutes? You got it. You got it. Well, I'm getting away from that subject. This chokehold they're talking about. Yeah, it's a different subject, Norm. I love you so much. But look, Norm, I really respect you. This is really not what we're talking about, the chokehold thing. There's a report coming out today. I'm going to take a break. If you want to call in about the subject that I brought up, you're welcome to do that. 622-9622. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be breezy and cool today as clouds give way to some sun, a high 61 to 67. And tonight it'll be clear and chilly, though 39 inland, 44 along the coast. 
Sunny but cool tomorrow with a high of 59 to 63. Thursday, sunshine mixing with clouds and remaining quite cool with a high of 60 to 64. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. The artists at All About Art in Bellevue next to Kangaroo Express say hop on over and pick up a unique gift and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. What was that, a short commercial? What happened there? What the heck happened there? Yeah. All right, all right, let's get back on topic here. Look, Mark was making the point that torture would be unchristian, and and the Pope would say... There's, there's no way that I would approve of torture. The alternative for the soldiers who caught those captives would have been to kill them or let them run and go. Just go ahead. Mm-hmm. Just go. I know that you're part of a team that wants to kill us all and blow up our buildings and kill our people. But if I kill you, <laughs> the Pope's not going to like that. Mm-hmm. If I capture you and then we put you on a waterboard, the Pope's not going to like that either. Mm -hmm. So why don't we, you know, Mark is exactly right. Why doesn't the whole world just simply say the Pope and Jesus Christ have it right, which is exactly the way we're supposed to live, and then there would be no wars. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this is that the bad guys don't care about the Pope. They don't care about Jesus Christ. They don't care about you. They did not call ahead to see if you were in the World Trade Center, which means, and I've, I've used this example before, when we were attacked on September 11th, 2001, nobody called to make sure I was out of the building. Yeah. Nobody called to make sure Robin was out of the building. In other words, they didn't care who they killed. They weren't aiming at people who had decided as a career to join the armed forces. They weren't aiming at normal military targets, which would be other military. They were aiming at civilians for nothing. We weren't at war with them. Mm -hmm. And to tell me Iraq wasn't involved, yeah, but Al-Qaeda was, and these guys were involved in Al-Qaeda. So today we have a report coming out that's going to give a 500-page summary of a 6,000-page report of the torture, and there are people who want this to come out. And when they're coming out, even according to John Kerry, even according to John Kerry, this is going to be bad news because people are going to start rioting and attacking Americans because they think that Americans are somehow behind this because of the label American. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't be, are you trying to tell me that they wouldn't be attacking us if they found out that we killed those guys? You mean if we just killed them and let their bodies rot in the dirt, we would have been doing the more Christian thing than to capture them and to ask them some questions with water? Yeah. Uh, Democratic Senator Clara McCaskill said she supports the release of the report. She says on CBS News, it exposes what the world already knows, and that is that the United States engaged in torture. But my feeling about this is that this is a gut check moment for our democracy. Tell me Al-Qaeda didn't commit torture on September 11th. Mm -hmm. Tell me that they didn't commit torture for no reason. If you call interrogation torture, and it's a choice of your words, not mine, if that's what you're going to call it, then guess what? You don't really want to protect Americans. If you're going to tell me that when you capture somebody on the, on the battlefield, that, per- well, that information is only good for a day or two. Mm-hmm. Really? What if, what if one of those people knew about another uh, impending attack? Pending attack. Mm-hmm. Whatever the word would be. What, what if they knew? Mm-hmm. They probably knew something. Uh, and then 
You, you want to hear something else? Listen to this. Yeah. Claire McCaskill, she's the senator again. She said this report would never happen in North Korea or China or Russia. If it doesn't come out, then we all need to get comfortable with the fact that in America, the CIA has no oversight. But Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, said, I think this is a terrible idea. Our foreign partners are telling us this will cause violence and deaths. So we're doing something that we know will cause violence and deaths. Mm -hmm. We're exposing the techniques of the military to get information that they felt. Don't tell me that I'm supposed to know how much time my information will be good for. I do a radio show. Mm -hmm. I trust that our military knows better than I do. I hope so. But at the same time, I know that I'm sitting here right now able to speak my mind. Thank you, veterans. Even if some of you disagree with what I'm saying here. Uh, former Bush Vice President Dick Cheney defended the interrogation program, telling the New York Times it was totally justified. He denied the CIA withheld any information and emphasized the program had been vetted by the Justice Department. He said, as far as I'm concerned, they ought to be decorated, not criticized. He said that of the CIA interrogators. When we had that program in place, we kept the country safe from any more mass casualty attacks, which was our objective. That's what he said. That's the dividing line right there between those who want it released and those who don't. That's my words. State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki confirmed that John Kerry had spoken with Feinstein last week to highlight ongoing efforts against the Islamic State group as well as the, American, the safety of American hostages around the world, fearing, this is my words, that that's going to, this information today is going to cause them to uh, behead some more of their captives. No. Oh, and that's not torture. No. no. Putting somebody on a board in the, in the shower, that's torture. Taking a knife and cutting their heads off and so that their families can see the video that you've posted on YouTube. Oh, that's not torture. That's just what we deserved. How can you even begin to try to convince me of this? Mm -hmm. How? Exactly. And Norm, if you're listening, I'm sorry. We're talking about something really important. The chokehold story, I don't like that story because I have already expressed about that story that the police officer in that case did not need to use the force he used. The, uh, the grand jury on that one was wrong, to my opinion. On this one, it's wrong to release this information. It's even wrong to consider the interrogation techniques torture because if you do that, go back throughout our American history and find me a war where we didn't use interrogation techniques you know, we released the prisoners, by the way. They didn't ki they get killed. They didn't die. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Our